three of week 10 of 52 weeks of vlogging and today has been made of awesome because I can show you my foot x-rays. So those of you who have been watching me for three weeks or more will remember this which is when I did something stupid and tried to use a laundry tub instead of a ladder and I fell off of it. Actually, it dumped me off of it and I hurt my foot and it swelled up so I filmed it and put it on YouTube because 52 weeks of vlogging. And I have an update for you. I went in to see the doctor this Monday. You don't normally wait two and a half weeks until you see a doctor when you have an injury like that, but it didn't swell up hugely and it didn't prevent me from getting my life done and my doctor was on vacation, so... And she took a look at it. She said she didn't think anything was broken, but she wanted to make sure, so she ordered an x-ray. I couldn't go for it right away because homeschool, so the kidlets and I packed up and went down today. And my x-ray technician was an amazing young woman who is totally made of awesome and she let me film my film and here it is this is my foot okay so what we're looking at here is just the front portion of my foot it's the phalanges which are the toe parts those are the parts that stick out like like your fingers and the bones just beneath the phalanges in the picture are the tarsals and the problem area is on the big toe just beneath those two phalange bones uh, phalange bones is that what they're called i don't even know where that Tarsal 1 meets the phalanges, and that joint there is my bunion! The tarsal is that big, thick, thick bone running up from the metatarsals to the phalanges. There are two phalanges in the big toe and three in the other ones. At the top of that tarsal, on the inside, you can see like a big knob kind of sticking out, and that is a sesamoid bone, and that is a big ass sesamoid bone let me tell you and then at the top of the tarsal you can see that sort of white shiny oval when i first saw that i got a little bit nervous because i thought oh that looks like it could be a tumor maybe but it's not it's just the other sesamoid bone you have two sesamoid bones are kind of funky because they're not structural in the same way that the rest of your bones are. They actually form within the ligaments and tendons. You have them in lots of places. One place is that spot where you can see my sesamoid bones there uh, at the distal end of tarsal one in your big toe. Another place is here at the base of your thumb. You've got a couple sesamoid bones right there. You can probably feel them. Another place is there's usually one here. There's usually one here. But the most famous sesamoid bone is your kneecap, otherwise known as your patella. The patella forms in the ligament that stretches from the front of your femur down over the front of that joint, it, which is your knee, to the front of your tibia. And it does a really important job there. It protects that joint when you're crawling around on the ground, and it also serves to provide part of the whole structural stability in that part of your leg. Anyway, back to the x-ray. I'm not that experienced with looking at actual x-rays. I'm more experienced with looking at anatomy books, and I'll share my favorite anatomy books with you in a minute. But I can't really see anything wrong, except for the fact that the tarsal pulls away from the other tarsals way more than it's supposed to, which is what happens when you have a bunion, so that's not really surprising. It's just kind of what I expected to see. I'll be interested in hearing the radiologist report. You will know as soon as I know. We'll come back to this picture if the radiologist tells me there is anything unusual about it, and I'll tell you exactly what that thing is. And in the meantime, if you want to learn more about anatomy, you can check out some anatomy books like The Body Movable by David Gorman. This is one of my favorites. He actually hand illustrated and hand wrote the entire text. And you can get it online, there's a link down in the description. And my college favorite, the Anatomy Coloring Book. This probably won't get you through medical school, but it will get you through a lot. And as you can see, it is well loved and well used. The thing I love about the Anatomy Coloring Book is actually that it builds on the principle that we learn things in context. And the more areas in which you can place information, the more likely you are to remember it in the future. So for example, rather than just reading an anatomy book and looking at pictures, you're actually coloring the pictures, you're becoming part of the process, you're engaging in what you're learning, and you're more likely to remember it all. This method definitely works for me. So I highly recommend this book. Also, if you want to learn more about anatomy, looking at my films reminded me how much I love anatomy and how much I love learning about bones and muscles and body 
functioning in general. So I will be doing an anatomy series. I need to take some time to gather materials together first, but we will be starting that next week or the week after. Stay tuned. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video and want to see more, you can subscribe using the button below or you can go to youtube.com slash vlogs. You can also find me on Facebook and Twitter and you can read my blog. I'm also on Google+. Plus. Don't forget to like and share because those thumbs up make a difference. So like it if you liked it. Thanks for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.